Hello, my name is Brad Zomik. I'm VP of Marketing and Analytics Experience Evangelist at Cumul IO. I'm here to present on the topic of empowering and engaging your customers with analytics. Here's a little uh, overview of what we're going to cover today. I'll do a quick introduction to myself and my background, as well as the background of Cumul IO, the sponsor of this webinar. I'll share some research that Cumul IO recently did looking at the market sentiment of analytics features in SaaS, and I'll drill a, a level deeper into the top 10 complaints about these analytics features paired with some really cool visuals to show what's good and what's bad. Then I'll go into what is a good customer analytics experience? How can we do better? Finally, I'll share a little bit about how you can get started, how you can crawl, walk, run, then fly and be a customer-facing analytics expert. About me, I'm not your typical product school instructor. I'm a marketer and not a product manager, but uh, I'm coming to you today with a user perspective. I'm a performance marketer. I spent 20 years in software and technology. I'm a super user of software and I'm a buyer of software. I bought dozens over the years and I'm an analytics super consumer. Marketing is one of the OG SaaS verticals. It's been around since the late 90s and uh, marketers are very performance driven. Everything we do, we're investing money. We want to see return on investment, but we measure at multiple different levels, traffic, click through conversion rates, and uh, we spend a lot of time in analytics. So I bring that experience with me today. And I also am rich with the knowledge of our founders. Our founders were data scientists and data visualization consultant at DXC Technology. That is a formerly HP consultant, and they worked on high impact, multi-million dollar decision support projects where they'd build a set of dashboards over the course of six months for clients to inform critical decisions, and sometimes a multi-million dollar project to decide not to do something. From that experience, they wanted to build a tool that could empower any business user and that was affordable and easy to use. And that led them to building Cumul IO. And today we help over 200 customers deliver an amazing analytics experience with less time and resources using embedded analytics, which is a low code and to help product managers quickly develop and deploy dashboards. We'll get started with some market research. Uh, recently, our team did a deep dive into G2, the most popular software review site. We looked at the most popular categories. We looked at the top seven categories. We looked at the top 20 companies in each category, and we collected the most 50 reviews. And we see this as a proxy for what the market thinks of analytics. Often in any given category, there's a lot of drop-off in the quantity of reviews after the top 20 to 50. So here's a little bit about what we found. Customer-facing analytics is a hot button issue. 20% of the total reviews across all the vendors addressed analytics features, and that amounted to 6,400 analytics reviews collected and analyzed. And of those reviews, uh, there were 27% were of a negative sentiment. And I put an asterisk next to that. There's a little bit of gamesmanship and the incentives for a lot of SaaS companies to get people to go to reviews. And a lot of us here who are practitioners have received some sort of promotion to leave a review for a gift card. And just thinking about your own buyer behavior, if you're at a restaurant, you're not often going to go out of your way to leave a good review, but if you have a bad experience, you're going to leave a bad review for free. Right. So that's the asterisk there. And we found that 90% of vendors had at least one negative review. Even the best of the best have people wanting more from them in terms of the experience with analytics. We also looked at analytics as a, as a, a part of pricing and packaging on websites. Visuals of analytics are pretty engaging and they help sell and promote the product. 94% of companies are featuring analytics in some way on their promotional materials online. We also looked at the pricing and packaging and more than 50% are in some way charging extra for analytics features. So that's a premium pricing tier and upsell package to add on the analytics module. When you put that together, there's a disparity, right? Everyone is promising data-driven, confident decision-making, but the truth is 90% of companies are actually getting negative reviews. It's a big opportunity for SaaS companies, for product managers to look at how we can bridge that gap with a better analytics experience. 
All right, moving along, we're going to get into some of the complaints that we hear from SaaS users. And uh, we're going to go top 10 David Letterman style and talk about all these things that people are not too crazy about. And we'll start with the smallest one and we'll uh, move on. And we have some fun visuals to share. Number 10, we're clocking in at 7% of complaints, a reference complications with sharing. And who hasn't had the experience of seeing a cool chart, screenshotting it, and putting it to Slack? It's inefficient, but uh, the more robust vendors are doing embedding features or widgets to allow sharing. And that could be sharing a link, sharing a picture in an email, or even sharing the whole chart to put into some sort of wiki or blog. That's the way the future. Number nine, being disconnected from the normal workflow. So the screenshot I have here is of Excel, who hasn't had the experience of doing some analysis to find an insight in Excel outside of the core application. But other ways this manifests itself is asking for a custom report from a CSM. Uh, or having to go to a side application, which is not the main module, or even a different panel from where the actions take place. Another top 10 complaint at number eight is no collaboration or alerts. And 16% of references cited lack of collaboration or alerting features. So this can come in a few different forms. It's the emails you might get that are a monthly report or a weekly report. It's the notifications that you see when you come in the app. And it's also the ability to talk to a colleague and comment on a chart about a certain insight. Because ultimately, a lot of this stuff is to inform a discussion and decide what to do next, hopefully as soon as possible. Uh, and the number seven, design was a common complaint. And design comes up in a few different ways. Charts that have too much going on, they're too busy, maybe the color scheme is off, they chose the wrong chart type, or even a really uh, simplistic chart that looks like you iframed in an Excel chart. And it happens quite a bit, you'd be surprised. 20% of people complaining about design. Slow performance. This is the classic hourglass, or if you're a Mac user, the spinning beach ball of death. 26% of the analytics reviews re reported a slow load time. And we know the attention span of the internet is like a goldfish. People don't see what they need in three seconds. People are abandoning the page and getting frustrated. Number five, lack of interactivity. Almost 30% of reviews cited lack of interaction. And this is one of those things that if you don't know, you don't know. A lot of what we see in analytics features today is static view only analytics. And I've prepared this nice gift to see what good is. And that's the ability to click and I see it have inter interlinking charts where they resize. In some cases you can click on a part of the chart and have an option to drill through and look at it by a different dimension. And number four, pulling data and reports. Again, 30% of people reporting limitations in, in data and chart exporting. This can be the not having the, fix, the feature or just clunkiness. It's something that a lot of people want. And what most people don't realize is that we've been trained to expect export to Excel, but to us, that's actually part of the a bad user experience. And as a market, or one day a week, I'm spending a couple of hours in Excel, slicing and dicing data because I don't necessarily have the insight that I need. And then now export to Excel won't go away. It's necessary for cross-platform analysis, and but vendors can definitely take part of this away and deliver more insight in the product and deliver more delight. Getting into the top three here with complaints uh, referencing the inability to customize, and this comes in many shapes and forms. There's branding, there's filtering the chart and slicing it by date or different dimensions. There's chart and dashboard building itself. We see this is a data studio type of functionality that just most vendors don't have. And if they do, it's clunky and very hard to use. But this is an area where there's a lot of Delta. And in fact, almost 40% of HubSpot users, one of the most popular CRMs and marketing automations, they have a data studio element and 40% of users prefer the HubSpot charts that they build themselves aside from the ones that are out of the box. All right, rounding out the last two it comes in many different flavors. So the lack of relevant insights. It could be too much information, not enough insight, a one size fits all approach. So for instance, I'm a sales manager and I want to see everything globally, but I log in as a, a line regional manager and I see that same global chart. I just want to see the New York area uh, on the regional thing, the sorts of things that can go wrong, the wrong geography, wrong currency, wrong language. Another issue is the 
being delayed in, in the reporting of data. And we want to make decisions based on what's happening now, not yesterday or last week. Generally missing critical insights that are needed to inform a good decision. So maybe not tied to the higher order. It could be, for instance, in, in learning, they often need to track completions. But what does that have to do with how the company is performing and, and improving revenue? And just generally the, that you can't make a decision confidently and quickly. And then finally, the catch-all is poor user experience with 71% citing the user experience. And this comes again in, in many varieties. It's everything that we talked about before, but also a steep learning curve. You, you can't find what you need, lots of clicks and discovering, got to ask for custom reports. But generally just, you don't, you know, the whole experience leaves more to be desired. So yeah, that's the top complaints. And I thought it might be interesting to talk about why you see all these subpar experiences happening with customer analytics. And the truth is customer facing analytics is a really nuanced and complex challenge. There's three layers to it, right? And it's a pyramid. They stack on top of each other. You have your data modeling and that's getting the right data stack and being optimized for an analytics data model, not your transactional data model to deliver information. There's the development of the application. So this is the coding of features, the shipping of the software in a timely and predictable manner. And then finally, the top of the stack is the visualization. And that's really what end users care about the most, <laughs> that they're having a great experience. And unfortunately, what happens is the technical components can delay and hinder UX benefits. And I put the kind of traffic light here, things are all going good on the data model, but where if you hit the skids during development, you don't, you don't see the UX benefit or the user doesn't, right? So data modeling, it's a big project, a weak model or inefficient tech stack can lead to performance issues and slow load time. These are big thorny projects. It's the bottom of the iceberg. And then what we see a lot is application development is often an area where there's a, just delays projects. And in a resource constrained environment, we only have a certain amount of engineers. Often any given software has a core differentiating feature set to its product that they're working on delivering value to their clients. And often that stuff, whether it's a bug or a new feature, will take precedence over with analytics, which is a side dish and often not thought about as differentiating feature. It can be. And uh, yeah, and delays in those technical areas to slow down the overall benefit to the user. In this day and age, we're fortunate to live in the golden age of software as a service. There's all sorts of fun point solutions. And I bifurcated the top and the bottom of this. The data pipeline is a project unto itself. You have, most companies will have data engineers or they can work on all this. There's many different parts of this puzzle. There's the warehouse, the, the analytics database, the ETL authentication layer. And that data model needs to be good regardless of any of the next steps. But where you can catch up and get speed at the top of the stack is with embedded analytics. So this is a glimpse into what we do. We take away that whole application development part of it and decouple from the engineering sprint because with a low code solution, product managers can drag and drop and build charts on the fly. And in fact, we have a lot of customers who are co-building with their customers and doing a better experience with less time and resources. You can take off a couple of $300,000 engineers away from analytics and let them focus on the core features, which is a benefit to the organization. So let's talk about what is analytics experience. It's the overall experience of a person using analytics features in SaaS, and that's how useful it is, or they're getting value, and how easy and fun it is to use. And it could be an amazing experience, it could be terrible. There is an experience that your users are having with it, and most people aren't thinking about that too much. How to make that good. So there are three value pillars that we see through all of our client interactions. So we have, first and foremost, is end user business value, that they're successful in what they're trying to do. Then we have the premium user experience, and then personalization. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about each and each one has its own nuance. So first we'll talk about the premium user experience and there's a few different layers here. There's the design element. Does it look cool? Is it attractive? Is it easy on the eye? There's the experience. What is it? Do they have to do their analysis of another app? Do they get what they need? Is it easy to use? There's often a very steep technical learning curve on business intelligence and analytics tools on the market. Interaction, can a user do things, change or filter what they see? Is there chart interaction? The speed, how many clicks does it take to get to the insight? And is it integrated? Is it its own module or is it blended into workflow? Personalization. So this is all about context. Does the user uh, see stuff that is specific 
to their role and what they need to do in the product. So I think classic example is the manager role and line employee. So in sales, it's pretty common to see a global view versus a micro view. HR tech is a great example of an admin user and an end user doing two completely different things in the product. The admin user wants to see analytics and performance. And then the end users want to do something like, what am I going to learn today related to my job? Access, can the user see data, access data beyond what is presented to them? Can they control it and manipulate? it and do different things with it. And finally, empowerment, this idea of manifesting your own destiny. Can a user or an admin choose their own venture, build their own charts and build a set of dashboards, the, the, the data studio type experience. And finally, the end user business value. This is all about being successful in whatever you're trying to do. Every software out there in the market today is eating up some part of manual paper operations where somebody's trying to do something more efficiently. Is the next action clear? Can they take the action quick? Are they confident and self-assured that they took the right action? And is the business satisfied with the outcome? You put all that together and you're in a good spot and it's good for the business. More interaction in the product, more time spent in the product. If customers are getting the insights they need to make confident decisions, they trust you and they look at you as a credible source of information that they want to keep on coming back to. That leads to less churn, um, increased customer advocacy. They want to have customers raving about you. And also your analytics become a differentiating aspect of your product. And then finally, a lot of companies as we saw before, more than half the companies are looking to monetize and upsell analytics. So let's talk about how to get started. And it sounds great in theory to have an amazing customer analytics experience, but it's easier said than done. So Based on our experience with customers, there is five levels of customer analytics experience and they're incremental and it's baby steps and crawling before you walk and walking before you run and running before you fly. <laughs> so the basics is a universal insight. It's before you even start sharing user specific data. It's general insights on how your customers are using the product and getting value from it. And actually this stuff also tends to be really great for thought leadership. But this is an example of something that we did for the government of Belgium, but less software oriented, but uh, Gong Labs is a great example of companies sharing universal insights across their customer base. So customers could do better work in their product. And this could be delivered in any way, email, direct conversations. Next, we get into customer specific assets. So a good example of this is an investment portfolio. This is what is your investments doing in the market today? And do I need to buy and sell things? And this may also not necessarily be in, at this point in the application yet. This could be coming through a custom report. It'd be coming through an email, but it's where things get interesting because it can inform, it has the context to inform decisions for specific users. Next is the embedded step. And this is when you actually are deploying analytics into your application and where the analytics are side by side with the actions. And this is how most people think about analytics, customer facing analytics and software. Most people skip right to this and maybe that's part of the complexity too, or, and the problems because people aren't necessarily crawling before they walk. And another thing that we see that happens here is people go straight to, we need everything, you know, the whole kitchen sink. But the truth is you can start with one insight at a time and get one insight and slowly build out your dashboards with one chart or one metric, one module at a time. Um, where things start getting really interesting and where you layer in the customer analytics experience or, or is, is being interactive and actionable. And this example that we are showing here is a, a mock example of an email tool where you can click on your audience segments and ship an email right from that. There are all sorts of applications like that. But the two things in the animation is that there's interaction between charts and there's action taking place. And this is where you start delivering a lot of value to your customers because they can find insights and do things quickly. But the, the pinnacle of self-actualization analytics is choose your own adventure. And this is where you can do a few different things. You can create a custom report or you can clone a report. You can augment and change charts. And this is super advanced. Five to 10% of SaaS companies are doing this today. But with an incremental approach, many companies can do this and do it successfully. So there's your five levels of customer analytics experience. And remember, it's first crawl, walk, run, and then fly. The role of helping your customers becoming data-driven is critical. If you're affecting their P&L and helping them be more profitable, it's good for business. You know, data-driven companies are more likely to attract new business and retain customers and be profitable. And if you're helping your companies do that with your software, you're in a good position to, to grow and scale as a company. 
and become a unicorn. <laughs> All right, and this webinar was brought to you by Cumulio, and we help companies deliver an amazing analytics experience with less time and resources using the low-code solution of vetted analytics. And we have some further learning resources for you to continue your learning journey related to the analytics experience, um, how to build a winning SaaS experience, and that's a little bit more detail in that Venn diagram that we shared. And also, we, if you want to drill deeper into some of the complaints that we shared earlier, we have a full report on the state of SaaS analytics, and we have a bunch of more granular detail and how different SaaS verticals that we reported on, the different types of complaints and percentages vary from vertical to vertical. And that's all. Thank you very much for your time and consideration. I hope you learned a bunch. And if you have any questions, you can email me, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn, or you can check us out on our website and learn more.